you parents know when it's summer vacation and the kids are home from school sometimes your car ends up being your office just to get out of the house and i have an office and yet i still am like i'm gonna go do a haul in my car <laughs> i just feel like this is the cave I was just talking to a woman and she was really struggling to figure out why she couldn't get over this person, over her ex, and she knows that he is toxic, unhealthy, and possibly even narcissistic. Let me just set the record straight. This is not easy stuff to deal with and judging yourself is not going to help the situation. Getting over anyone in general is a difficult thing. We get uncomfortable or feel sad when we get rejected in the slightest way. Never mind someone legit just not wanting to even be with you anymore and possibly not loving you or even discarding you. So multiply that by a thousand and that's what it feels like to go through a narcissistic breakup. Now I know what you're going through because I have been there myself and it has been my mission to help you guys not only educate you, but to inspire you, to motivate you, to really help you to learn not just about this person, but also about yourself to heal and to actually move on. But I wanna tell you, there are definitely some things that people do that hurt themselves so bad and they never move on. I wish I could say that everyone moves on once they really know this information, but it's not just about knowing the information, it is about practicing it and it is about you more than it is actually about this other person. Where she was really struggling, and I see this a lot, and I myself have been there as well, so none of these things are things that we're judging anyone on because I have been there, you have been there, and you might still actually be stuck in some of these. I know for me, where I definitely struggled the most in the early stages was still thinking that this person was the love of my life. I know this is painful to hear, and it was really hard for me to actually really get this. First off, it was hard for me to hear it, let alone really absorb it and get it, but this person is not the love of your life. I know, I know, cry, shed the tear, I am here for you, big, you know, virtual hugs here, but I'm telling you, this person was not the love of your life. Healthy relationships and healthy love don't actually end. You definitely are not gonna end in the way that this relationship did. I want you to really understand what I'm about to say. This was not about love, this was actually about trauma. And it was trauma actually for the both of you. What you're doing now with watching videos like this and like working on yourself and being on the phone and coaching and podcasts and seminars and workshops and all of these things, you're actually trying to break the pattern. This person, not so much. Because I hear you guys all all day long giving the laundry list of the things that you did wrong in this relationship but do you think that that's what this person is doing no and you kind of do have to start with yourself now the problem is most people that I talk to and I did it myself as well is they sit too much in the laundry list of things that they did wrong and don't really ever focus on the other person and what they weren't able to get from that person or what that person did wrong what hurts a lot of people is that they still are being manipulated they still actually think that this person's a catch. They can't see past the persona or the character that this person's playing, or even if they have, they haven't faced the reality of who this person actually is. Remember, you're dealing with a master manipulator, so you are dealing with a person that can play a character extremely well. And if you're still front and center, if you're still buying tickets to the show, and you're still believing that this person is the character that they're playing, then you're definitely gonna stay stuck. Hear me out, this is where I'm gonna educate you. Victims of narcissists abuse experience all of them will experience one thing and that's cognitive dissonance this is where you struggle to see that one minute this person's Prince Charming and the next minute this person is the devil they can't see the abuse they can't see the love bombing they can't see the manipulation or the gaslighting like they're not spotting any of these red flags some of it is definitely lack of education where you just don't know any of these things the other part though is sometimes you do really know this stuff and yet you don't want to see it because you're still being manipulated, because you still believe that persona or that character that this person's playing. And it's not because you can't face the reality. It could be completely black and white. You don't want to. That has to do with you and has to do with your own traumas. This is where we want this person to change for us. This is when we want someone to love us. We just want to be in a relationship. We just want the white picket fence. We haven't really built that like really strong sense of self that says, even if I, I know I'm going to go into pain if I have to end this relationship, but I would rather do that than stay stuck here. And on top of all of that, I do know that at the end of this road, 
I will find the person that is right for me. Even though I want it to be this person, it can't be this person because I can't change them. So I'm not trying to change them. I'm not trying to heal them. I'm not trying to have them be something that they're not. I'm not falling in love with them because of their potential. I am seeing who you are through the consistent patterns that you show me, and I am healthy enough and strong enough to be able to see it and walk away from it if it does not serve me. But when you're wounded, that kind of like ego and inner child is just like begging for love and attention and validation. It's eating up the love bombing. It loves the attention because that will actually kind of fill that void. What most people don't realize is that they're playing out these traumas in the relationship that they're in where they're still wanting mommy to be there still wanting daddy to love them like they don't see that the person that they're picking to be in a relationship with is just basically a representation of the person that they have the wound with and while I love the fact that people are very introspective and they want to figure out what they did wrong and they, they can even admit like hey yeah I didn't do this right and I really want to work on this absolutely love that but the problem is there's always going to be mistakes in any relationship you could always do things better because you're human and you're flawed and you're not perfect and you're not gonna do it right every single time nothing that you did warranted this behavior from this person you also really have to accept that you're never ever going to be good enough I don't care how perfect you are you're never going to be good enough for a wounded person that does not see value in what you bring to the table and that my friends has nothing to do with you that is all that person that person does not feel worthy of the relationship that they say that they want they also have an inability to self-reflect and work on themselves because everyone is flawed everyone has something and everyone should be introspective and really working on themselves and trying to figure out what they're doing wrong in the relationship but most people don't operate from that standard they operate from the standard of you did this wrong when you are wounded you are looking for someone to save you this means that you're looking for someone to give you all of the things that you don't give yourself you are looking for this person to finally heal and fill that void that's inside this is the case for every single person walking the earth unless they know what their wounds are and they are fully consciously aware of when that wound shows up in their relationship the key here with the wounds is desperate I am desperate to feel loved when you are desperate for love you are going to overlook all the red flags you are not going to have a standard you're not going to have an outline of who it is that you're really looking for you might be a little vague I'm looking for a nice person I'm looking for someone who's sweet da, 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 da. but you won't even know what any of that actually means in the relationship you also really don't have a good understanding of what healthy good healthy character of a person person not man or woman person is and how this person should behave in your relationship if you were operating from that level you would have seen really quickly early on in this relationship that this person just isn't right for you that this person isn't capable of being the person that you want them to be and you would have been healthy enough within yourself to be able to just walk away so I want to ask you, which one of these things are you and where are you staying stuck over and over again? A lot of people are stuck in kind of believing that this person was the love of their life. They can't accept the fact of who this person really was. They want it to be this person so badly. You can love someone, you can have love for someone, and you can say, I will love this person for the rest of my life. Personally, me. I'm, I marry any person I've ever been in a serious relationship with, I will love them for the rest of my life. I don't want anything bad to happen to them, even though at times some people are just, you know, you just want them to suffer. But at the end of the day, I don't want anything bad to happen to anyone. I will always have love for a person because I shared a part of my life with that person, especially when you marry someone, especially when you have a child with that, with that person. But when you get into a healthy relationship, you will real quickly understand that while you can love someone, some people are just not right for you. And the reason why they're not right for you is because they are unhealed and you have to accept that there's nothing you can do to change this person, to get them to see something. Because a lot of times at the end of the day, I hate to break it to you, they think you're the problem. So if they think you're the problem and you're saying, well, I think this person's narcissistic or they're unhealthy, that just goes to show that regardless of love, you guys are just not on the same page. And while that's something that, of course, you're gonna mourn in like the beginning phases of it, right? Where you're first going through the separation, first going through the breakup or the divorce. I've been there, ugly cry in the shower, ugly. But you do get to a place where you start to make peace with something 
when you know that better is coming. So I hope you guys enjoyed this week's video. Please comment down below. Tell me like really honestly, where are you struggling in this process? A lot of this has to do with accepting and it has to do with reprogramming who you are and really, really learning how to love yourself and parent yourself. And if you're interested, I will link my self parenting course down below. I always link everything in every video, but definitely, definitely go check that out because we are going to get into just the basics of mental health and how to take care of yourself. Why is this so important? Because if you do not know how to do this, you will play out time and time again, those wounds, those insecurities, those fear, all that lack that's still living inside of you. And honestly, regardless of having the relationship, having money, having success, having the things that you want in your life, don't we all just wanna learn how to actually know how to handle life, to deal with life, and to just be happy? So if you're interested in knowing all of that, the links are down below, and I will see you guys in my next video.